Hi everyone, welcome to Living Life. Today is December 19. There are times when we just want to share about what we have done in our lives, uh, just boasting about it. And sometimes we do write our resume based upon what we have done in our lives. Um, like, well, I did that, I did this, I worked where, and I, I've been mentored by someone, I, knew, I know who, I have a network of people in this area. And sometimes those are the elements that we boast before the Lord. Even as Christians, we sometimes succumb to the attitude of boasting of ourselves because that's the way how we survive in this world where we compete with one another. So just boasting about our, our strength and our good works sometimes build our pride and say, yes, I deserve the glory or the honor and the, and the, uh, the places that I need to work. I mean, I deserve all that. Um, but in scripture, sometimes uh, it testifies to warn us against boasting about what we have done. Instead, it directs us uh, to boast about what God has done for us in, uh, through the scripture. So I would like to invite everyone to see that in today's passage. Let us look into today's passage. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verses 24 through 33. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. He prayed to the Lord who answered him and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah's heart was proud and he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Therefore, the Lord's wrath was on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah repented of the pride of his heart, as did the people of Jerusalem, Therefore the Lord's wrath did not come on them during the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great wealth and honor, and he made treasuries for his silver and gold and for his precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuables. He also made buildings to store the harvest of grain, new wine, and olive oil, and he made stalls for various kinds of cattle and pens for the flocks. He built villages and acquired great numbers of flocks and herds, for God had given him very great riches. It was Hezekiah who blocked the upper outlet of the Gion Spring and channeled the water down to the west side of the city of David. He succeeded in everything he undertook. But when envoys were sent by the rulers of Babylon to ask him about the miraculous sign that had occurred in the land, God left him to test him and to know everything that was in his heart. The other events of Hezekiah's reign and his acts of devotion are written in the vision of the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Hezekiah rested with his ancestors and was buried on the hill where the tombs of David's descendants are. All Judah and the people of Jerusalem honored him when he died, and Manasseh, his son, succeeded him as king. What I'd like to propose uh, through today's passage is to come to the feet of the cross and humble yourselves and boast only of the things that God has done for you in your life. Uh, we see in today's passage, verses 24 to 26, how Hezekiah receives this grace of salvation um, through God as he prayed to the Lord. At the point of his death, God displayed his grace of salvation to him. I believe this is the only place that we will receive this salvific grace in our lives at the point of death. Where were we supposed to die? We were supposed to die together, with, uh, together uh, at the cross. Instead, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, died for us on the cross. I mean, because of the sins that we have in our life as sinners, we were supposed to receive the wrath of God and face the ultimate penalty of death. But instead, Christ died for us. When someone else sacrifices for you, his life before you, we are truly humbled and we are truly silenced. So I believe the only place we can humble ourselves and silence all our boasting is that our, all our pride is at the feet of the cross. For there stands Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who takes away all of our sin as he dies on behalf of us as a ransom for many. So in likewise, we see Hezekiah at the point of his own death. He prayed to the Lord and God answers him and gives him a miraculous sign. 
And we know that his life was extended for 15 more years and he received the grace of life that extends for another 15 years. But sadly, in verse 25 it reads, But Hezekiah's heart was proud and he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Now God showed him the mercy and kindness of extending his life, just able to save him from his own death uh, for another 15 years. But he was not able to take away his pride, for he was not standing in front of the cross of Jesus Christ. For us, it is different. We, every one of us, do have a pride in our hearts, but because of the cross, we are able to take away the sinful pride in our hearts and just show our gratitude by humbly kneeling down before the cross of Jesus Christ and just, uh, just acknowledging the kindness that God has displayed through Christ Jesus. So the second thing that the scripture today testifies and challenges us, is, challenge us to do is to boast only of the things that God has done for us. Sadly, Hezekiah did not boast about what God has done. We see in verse 27 to 30 that the chronicler narrates of the things that Hezekiah did for uh, the, uh, the Israelites and Judeans. Uh, in verse 27, it reads, Hezekiah had very great wealth and honor and made treasuries for his silver and gold, etc. In verse 28, it reads, he also made buildings to store the harvest of grain, and etc. In verse 29, it reads, he built villages and acquired great number of flocks and herds. Um, and verse 30, it reads in the bottom part of it, it says, he succeeded in everything he undertook. Now, for all of us, these are the listings that we will put in our resume. We just want to boast about what we did so that we could promote ourselves, so that people could uh, think highly of us, so that we could receive what we deserve based upon what we have done. But that's not what Scripture tells us to do. Uh, in verse 31, God tests Hezekiah on this area. It reads, But when envoys were sent by the rulers of Babylon to ask him about the miraculous sign that had occurred in the land, God left him, Hezekiah, to test him and to know everything that was in his heart. Now we know that in his heart there was pride. So naturally what he did was boasting about uh, his city, the temple. He showed the envoys the ins and outs of the temple and also the cities. He was so joyful that he could show what he has done. But that was the area that God was so furious about. He warned that he will, put, he will bring wrath upon the city because he has done so. The Babylonians will later come to just desolate, uh, uh, annihilate uh, Jerusalem. Uh, and we see that in verse 26. Then Hezekiah repented of the pride of his heart. Yes, he did when he received that uh, voice from the Lord. He repented, but he was thankful that this would not happen during his lifetime. Um, there, it says in verse 26, Therefore the Lord's wrath did not come on them during the days of Hezekiah. Yes, he was able to uh, get away with what he has done, but what does that mean for us? I mean, the envoys were here to listen, to ask about, inquire about the miraculous sign that, that I heard in the land, but do we instead tell them of the stories that what we have done? I mean, that's what Hezekiah made a mistake before the Lord. Because the envoys were just ready to hear what God has done in the land. We could have instead boasted, upon, boasted about, yes, God saved us from the enemies. He gave us great wealth. Uh, he dwells in his temple. And he gives us and shows us his mercy and compassion to his people who seek him. But instead, Hezekiah boasted of what he has done. I mean, I see uh, myself as well. Don't I boast about what, how I performed as a preacher, how I performed before the Lord, how I did my ministry well? But what God wants to uh, have us do, God, what God tests us is to see how we boast about God and testify of the things that was miraculous uh, to us so that people could see what God can do. I believe that's the message that this passage is telling us to humble ourselves and to boast only of the things that God has done for us. So as I proposed earlier, I 
urge every one of us, even including me, to come to the feet of the cross, humble yourself, and boast only of the things that God has done for us. So as we just read in today's passage and looked into it, I think it's very important for every one of us to continue to uh, live in humility and just praising and worshiping, honoring God for saving us from our sins. So I believe that through that, our life will be uh, filled with joy and gladness because we are driven by the grace that we receive. So I bless every one of us to live a great day today uh, in, in gladness and joy by praising the Lord with all your hearts. Let us pray. Father Lord, thank you for the grace that you have given us. We are truly humbled at the feet of the cross for you have sent your son to save us by sacrificing your only begotten son. So I ask the Holy Spirit to help every one of us to live in humility, acknowledging what God has done for us, for the sinners, for those who rejected God, and to boast only of the things that God has done for us by praising him, glorifying what you have done for the sinners like us, and just, um, just receiving this grace that you have given us freely. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. This program is 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 